Yeah, let's talk some cricket now on the Sports Max Zone. After squeezing into the Republic Bank Caribbean Premier League playoffs, Jamaica Talawas moved one step closer to the final, beating St. Lucia Kings in the Eliminator on Tuesday. The Kings were sent packing after creeping to 125 for nine of their 20 overs, led by 40 from Roston Chase and 19 from skipper Sikanda Raza. Player of the match, Fabian Allen, ripped through the Kings lineup, grabbing four for 25. Brandon King, who was doubtful ahead of the match because of a groin injury, and Raymond Reefer both led the Talawas run chase with 30, while Alex Hales added 24. Barbadian seamer Matthew Ford did damage with the ball taking 4 for 23. But the Talawas went on to reach 126 for 5 to win with 16 deliveries to spear. So we said at the top of the show, Mariah and uh, Ricardo, that the Talawas are showing themselves to be ready to retain their title, having been a little bit dodgy in the group stages. Um, losing some matches that they would have been disappointed about, but they came good at the right time to make the playoffs and now look strong going in. Yeah, they've come to the party at the right time. They've been playing really aggressive cricket and I love that from them and for them. I will say that in this Talawas team, we've seen a collective effort. It's not dependent on one person only. And I really love that because they're strong with both bat and ball. We saw Chris Green at uh, different points in time getting the wickets for them. Now we have uh, Fabian Allen entering the discussion. We've had uh, Imad Wasim, of course, getting wickets for the Jamaica Talawas. And with the bat, it's anybody's day once they decide to turn up. So I think the Jamaica Talawas at this point in time is a complete team, an all-round team. And they're looking, as the captain said, really dangerous. Yeah, they're definitely looking really dangerous, uh, this Jamaica Talawas team. And Mariah is right about um, just the number of players who are stepping up for them. Uh, unlike the game on Sunday, where they batted first and piled on the runs, they had to bowl first this time around and did a brilliant job of restricting the St. Lucia Kings. Fabian Allen, I love the way he's coming to the party. Fabian Allen is doing at the back end of this tournament what he is in the Talawas team to do. He's an impact player. Yes. He can deliver with the bat. He can deliver with the ball. Mm -hmm. He can deliver in the field. And we've seen all of that this tournament. But at the important moment of this tournament, he's doing it with a greater level of consistency and with greater impact. And that's important for the Talawas. Something that we cannot underestimate from last night's game as well. Sometimes those lower totals can prove challenging because you're not sure how to approach them as a batting side. And yes, you would expect the Talawas to get 126. Love the celebration, <laughs> Fabian Allen. You would expect the Talawas to get to 126. But you cannot underestimate what Brandon King and Alex Hales did at the top of the innings. What they did was to take the attack to the St. Lucia Kings and as far as I'm concerned, almost take the game away from them because of how quickly they scored in the power play. So, yes, the Kings were able to get four wickets and the Tanawas were 90 out for four at one stage. But by then, the work had already been done and it was pretty comfortable for the likes of Raymond Reefer and Imad Wazim to comfortably cruise home. Once you get into a situation in those last 10 overs where you have more balls than runs needed, then in T20 cricket, in modern day cricket, it is a cruise. And that's what happened for the Talawas last night. So overall for me, a quality performance and it sets them up well going into qualifier two on Friday. Yeah, well, two things that the St. Lucia Kings um, just couldn't manage the Talawas this, this season. Um, <laughs> the Talawas played undefeated against them all season and actually were the ones that knocked them out last year in the Eliminator as well. Yes. yes. So the Talawas will feel confident whenever they see the Kings. <laughs> and a point was also made that the overseas players for the Talawas are contributing significantly, um, more significantly than a lot of other franchises overseas players have been, have been. So that Agreed. is another factor that is going the Talawas way. The overseas players are really um, playing their part and uh, making making their presence count. Yeah, off the top of my head, I when we think about top performance, a lot of credit goes to those overseas players. Imad Wasim, we saw him stepping in as a captain, getting the job done with the bat and the ball. Chris Green has made his presence felt. And as well as Alex Hales, we had Salmon doing some damage with yeah, the ball right, earlier yeah. in the season. But the thing, thing that I, the point that I want to make is, is that 
it's a mixed lens because what I like about the international players coming into the Jamaica setup, it's as if they feel really comfortable. They're not outsiders. They've gelled really well. The chemistry between the local and the international players is something that we must make mention of because think about it. They don't play cricket together. You come into a setup and you know you have somebody, an international player like Imad Wasim, giving the rules, you know, laying down the, setting the feel and everything. But nobody's ego is getting in the way. And I love that for the Talawas. Yeah, definitely, for sure. And uh, Imad Wazim has had a good time when he's had the opportunity to captain this Talawa side. And talking about the overseas players who have done well, Imad Wazim has been with this team for a while. And clearly, he is gelled well with this yeah. unit as well. But you think about um, the fact that the number two and number three bowlers in the CPL this season are both overseas players and both represent the Jamaica Talawas in Amir and Chris Green. Yes. So that's the type of impact we're talking about with these overseas players and the Jamaica Talawas set up. And then you have um, Alex Hales with that fabulous century <laughs> yeah. when they needed it on Sunday. Brandon King local now has been consistent all season yes and fabian allen, allen is now coming to the party and so it's coming together in a really good way for the jamaica Talawas. but their toughest tests are still to come and i hope that proves correct because if it is still to come then there's only one match but if it's are still to come then they have two and they'll be in the final. <laughs> oh my, it had to be Ricardo. Lance, can we continue? Yeah, yeah. The, the Talawas will, of course, know their opponents for qualifier two when Ghana, Amazon Warriors, and Trinbago Knight Riders clash in qualifier one, which bowls off in uh, less than an hour from now. The home team are eyeing their sixth CPL final for a chance to finally lift the trophy. The winners of qualifier one head straight to Sunday's final, while the losers play the Talawas in. Qualifier 2 on Friday. Ricardo Mariah, can the Amazon Warriors secure their sixth appearance in the final? Well, they're really good at getting to the final. So if you are to ask me on history, then yeah, final seems to be that's where they get to. <laughs> yes. However, this Ghana Amazon Warriors team, everybody is saying that this is the team that's going to take them across the line. They have uh, Saim Ayub, who has been really clicking with the bat. He has been brilliant for his team. Shea Hope as well. We have to remember that century scored by Shea Hope. And they also have players that have been in form. Because it's one thing to be a big name on paper. But also the Guyana Amazon Warriors have really been clicking. And I think there's an X factor about the team this year. However, they're up against TKR. And with TKR, they're very, very unpredictable. The names on paper speak for themselves. The players are pure quality. So tonight, if it's any CPL match that I'm not missing, so nobody asked me to go out tonight. It's this one. I'm watching this one. <laughs> I get the feeling that someone has already asked Mariah to go out, and that's her way of telling them absolutely not. not, not. Um, but <laughs> Shea Hope, 407 runs um, for the season. Um, Ayub, 357 runs, as Mariah pointed out, and they are very important to this Warrior setup. But the Trinbega Knight Riders, who I picked from some time ago to go all the way in this season's CPL. For me, with the, with the Knight Riders, there is just so much quality there, so much experience there. And when it comes to the Knight Riders, I don't even look at the numbers because I know that they have a number of match winners yeah. in that team. Just take your pick, whether it's going to be Pollard or it's going to be Nicholas Puran or it's going to be Andre Russell or it's going to be Sunil Narayan. <laughs> they have players that on any night can turn up to the party and take the game away from their opponents. Question is, will they click for another two or three games to get the job done? They certainly have what it takes to do so, though. Yeah, the fact is, um, I like, I've always liked the TKR. But I'm seeing in the Amazon Warriors game this season, particular <laughs> season, something that I hadn't seen before. And we've seen them it's win consistently hot. before and not win in the final. But there's something about their game this year that tells me that they have what it takes to go all the way Thank to you. win the final. I'm not sure who's going to win tonight. I, I believe that the loser of tonight's game, though, will beat the Talawas. That's okay. my feeling. And um, the, the teams that are playing tonight are going to play in the final on Sunday as well. Wait, so you don't have the Talawas in the final? 
Pardon? Do you have the Talawas in the final? No, that's what I'm saying. The okay. Talawas, the, the Talawas will lose qualifier two. Yeah. Whoever, whoever it is. If, they, if the Warriors and Warriors lose to TKR tonight, yeah. I think the Warriors will beat the Talawas. If the TKR lose to the Warriors tonight, I think, I think TKR will beat the Talawas. Okay. But that's a fair assessment, Lance and Mariah, because yes. in truth, yes. the Knight Riders and the Amazon Warriors have been by some distance, in the my best, opinion, the, the best the, teams the, this, this yeah, term. The, the top two teams yeah. this campaign. Yeah. Um, having said that, though, I think, and I'm not disagreeing with you yeah. in, in relation to whoever loses tonight may well beat the Talawas on Friday, yeah. but I think they will get as tough a challenge from the Talawas as they have gotten for previously. Well, they'll get a tougher challenge from the Talawas than they have gotten this season, whoever it is mm -hmm. um, that loses tonight's match. And so I would say, go out and try and get the job done tonight because although you're going to Friday as favorites, mm -hmm. it will not be easy because this is not the same Talawas team yeah. that played midway through yeah. the preliminary and, and stage the fact of is, the competition. T20 cricket is a lot about momentum. There's, yes. there's a momentum factor in a T20 game that you know you things go wrong for you in two or three overs and you, you find it difficult to get yourself back and your, your job is derailed. So, you know, I, I, while I feel that the TKR and the Amazon Warriors are both better than the Talawas, I'm not going to sit here and say I'd be shocked if the Talawas uh, beat both of them and win the title because that's how T20 is. Correct. Yeah, for sure. Well, that match is coming up tonight. The Trinbega Knight Riders versus the Ghana Amazon Warriors immediately after the zone. And coming up on At The Track on Thursday on the Sportsmax Zone, young Trinidad and Tobago jockey Kimmel Santo winning the British Columbia Derby at Hastings Racetrack in Canada for his biggest career triumph. Plus, another massive stakes win in the USA for Barbadian trainer Safi Joseph Jr. And the latest stories from Jamaica and Barbados. All this coming up on At The Track Thursday during the Sportsman Zone.